Hi crafty friends, this is Chelsea. I have done a December daily or a December memories type project for many years. Over that time I figured out a few things that helped me accomplish this project so I end up with completed albums. I'm going to share those tips with you in this video and make a couple of pages to show you my process. This is a collaboration with the creative design team so I will link the playlist at the end of this video so that you can see all of their beautiful pages as well. For me, one of the biggest keys to success is to work with one collection. That way I know everything flows together and I don't have to worry about things matching or going together well. This year I'm using the beautiful Christmas Story collection from Close to My Heart. I'm showing you here the pocket cards, they're called Picture My Life cards. And there's a really good selection. There's journaling cards, some just with pattern, some more with like titles or images on them and I like that there's both 3x4 and 4x6 cards so lots of selection there. I like to mix in pocket pages as well as full 6x8 pages. This is the gorgeous sticker sheet that goes with this collection. I love the touch of gold foil. It's definitely a more kind of traditional Christmas collection and here are the pattern papers. Now I love this pattern here with the black background. It's just like really rich colors and of course that plaid, I'm going to be using every scrap of that that I can. I love plaids. So a good selection of more like traditional Christmas colors. And then of course there's the coordinating cardstock pack, which is super helpful uh, when you're working on projects. Then you know you have a sampling of all the colors of cardstock that match that collection. And of course, there's coordinating embellishments. All the Close to My Heart collections have coordinating embellishments. And this one is interesting because it has uh, some die cut glitter paper pieces, which you can't really tell from the front, but I flip it around to the back. You can see the shapes and the words a little bit better. And then these ones are paperboard. So they're like a very thin chipboard, but there's some in black, some in this pine color and some in scarlet. And then there are white acrylic pieces. Some are standalone and some coordinate with the paperboard. I'm gonna show you in the catalog because it's really hard to tell. But see how they layer on top of each other? So you have like the white on top of the gold or the black and white together, the black and gold together. So I think that's a really cool feature that you can layer them up and have layered embellishments. So for the last few years, I have stuck with the six by eight size. I'm using the close to my heart. Everyday Life 6x8 albums, as well as the coordinating page protectors. So I have 4x6 pockets, 3x4s, and then just the standard 6x8. Now something that I'm doing differently this year to make the process even faster and easier is I'm using sketches. So the creative design team has designed a sketchbook. This one has measurements, which is awesome. It will help you pull the pages together super fast. And they can be used for any theme. It does not have to be Christmas. So we have three by four pockets, four by six pockets, and a lot of the six by eight pages as well. I will leave a link down in the description box for you guys so you can find it easily and go check it out. So this sketchbook comes as like a digital file. I just printed mine out with my laser printer. I know a couple of the girls have gotten theirs already like printed and bound, which is super cool. And I will probably want to do that eventually. But so far I just printed out a couple pages that I knew I wanted to use the sketches from. Lots of times I will just look at things digitally too. And now I'm just selecting my papers. This strip of paper up here, I actually cut with the decorative borders, thin cuts. It's a retired border set. Uh, but I love the stitched scallop in that one. I use that one quite a bit. You could use a border punch, you could use dies, whatever you have. If you don't want to add the fancy border, you could definitely just put in a straight cut piece. I am adding photo mats. Um, all the measurements tell you like how big to cut everything. What I prefer to do is to make my photo mats like a four by six. And then I just trim down my photo slightly to have a little bit of the mat showing rather than making like four and a quarter by six and a quarter inch mats. Now this little strip of glitter paper was not on the sketch. I'm adding that. Remember sketches are just a guideline. You can do whatever you want with them, but it gives you that starting point. So that little strip of glitter paper is about, I think it's about an eighth of an inch 
by six inches. And I love that just little hint of gold because I'm going to have some other gold on this page too and it will tie it all together. And then I'm dovetailing these strips with a snip in the middle and then I just go from each corner up to the top of that little snip and just to add a little bit of detail. My goal with December daily pages is to make them pretty but not overdone either. I want them to have some special details on them, but I always want my photos and my stories to take center stage. I like to have repeating elements on my pages too, so these circles here are going to be for the day numbers. So I have the stitch circle thin cuts and the regular circle thin cuts. Um, and then I also have some greenery. That gold one is from the Christmas Story card making workshop. Uh, stamp and die set and then the green one is actually from the embellishment pack that goes with this collection but I will be having little sprigs of greenery going throughout as well as those circles as I number my days. Now you see I'm using the paper crafting tool because I realized that I wanted my flag pieces to be a little bit higher and I wanted them to go under this strip so that the ends were hidden so I love that that tool allows you to like just pry up things that you've already stuck down. You're going to see it again a little bit later because believe it or not, this is not the last time that I'm going to peel that strip up and move those flags. So hang on for that, but it works really good. Uh, my circles, I'm going to leave them blank. So as you see me make these couple of pages, there's no numbers on them. One, I have not decided yet how I'm going to number it if I want to stamp or if I want to cut numbers out on my Cricut. But I think for now, I'm gonna leave them with no numbers so I have the flexibility to move the pages around in my book as I see fit. I always like to have some sort of plan uh, going into the Christmas season. So whether that is I'm going to make pages ahead like I'm doing here, I have done that in the past as well, made like my whole album ahead of time. And then how to keep track when I'm taking pictures is I use my phone and start a new note and I just put all the days in there and then I will write down my journaling. And also if I have my pages pre-made, sometimes I will make a note if it is a portrait photo or a landscape photo or if maybe there's multiple photos on that day. Just so that as I'm going through my days, taking my pictures, writing down my stories. I know what I'm working with that's already finished in the album. The other thing I have done too is just go through my month, do the same thing, keep track of my journaling in my phone. And then at the end of the month, I create my album. So I've done it both ways. I like both ways. It just kind of depends on what I want to do. Usually around the beginning of January, I will sit down and make my album in like a full day or two. Um, that works really good for me too. I just know that I'm not going to do it in the month of December, so I don't even try to put that pressure on myself. I know a lot of people craft along during the whole month, but I just know myself and I'm too busy baking and doing fun things and watching Christmas movies. Like I don't want to be working on this project during the month. Now you can see I'm back at it with that paper crafting tool and I am just peeling everything up. <laughs> I am just decided that this was too far over. I didn't get it far enough to the left and it was just looking kind of weird to me. I'm probably just being picky at this point, but hey, I decided to peel it up. I had to rub off a little bit of adhesive, but other than that, it came up super cleanly. Add more adhesive there and stick that strip down again. <laughs> And there, I'm, I'm happier with that location a little bit more off to the left-hand side. And it gives my journaling some room to breathe as well. And just feels a little bit more balanced to me. So the last thing I'm going to do on here is just adhere down the greenery and the circles. And that is that. That's as much as I'm going to do on that page. And I'm going to start with a second page. So I've grabbed another sketch. This one I'm going to change up. A fair bit it's not gonna look quite the same but I'll have the general idea so I'm using that beautiful plaid as my background I love this pattern and then I'm using the buildable tags thin cuts because this sketch didn't have really room for journaling and I like to have journaling on every page because usually I do it like one story per page this tag 
is from the fancy tag set and I cut it in half so that I could slide it just under the edge of my photo mat there. there that is a four by six photo so it takes up a big chunk of the page. I'm putting the little reinforcer around my tag there and those two little strips you, you see down there those are going to be going at the bottom of my photo mat. I grabbed this retired ribbon from my stash. I thought it was perfect because it has black and gold so it really goes along with this collection and I plan to stick it just under my photo mat there. Now I grabbed some black baker's twine. I learned this from my friend Erin so this is pretty much how I do my tags now because <laughs> I think it's really cute. Put your ribbon through first and then use your twine to tie a little bow and hold your ribbon on there. And then I always like to just kind of adjust my ends, adjust the bow, and then I will trim down those little pieces at the top. I don't want this sticking super far over the top because that will be sticking out the top of the page protector. And I don't want it to get all kind of frayed from uh, the pages turning and stuff. I do really like having some interactive elements on my December daily pages. Uh, it just makes it interesting and fun to flip through the albums. My daughter is obsessed with my albums. I've had the last two years of December albums out uh, just as I've been working on this project for inspiration and she is obsessed. <laughs> she will pull them down off the shelf probably like once a day or so and just flip through them and comment on the pictures. And it is so cute. So people of all ages love these little albums. Usually I put mine out with um, all my Christmas decorations. So I store them with my Christmas decorations and then I will pull them out at the same time. So I wanted to mention the greenery on this page is cut with the pine glitter paper. If you have not seen pine glitter paper yet in person, you really need to because it's kind of multi-dimensional. It looks like it has some silver and a couple of tones of green in it. It's really beautiful. So you'll probably see that popping up throughout my album. Uh, the large poinsettia is from the sticker sheet. I wish I had a whole sheet of just the flowers because they're so pretty. You can see here I'm using my tag to help me figure out where the adhesive needs to go. I did debate using foam tape on this, but it's just a flat tag with it's going to have some writing on it. So I don't think I need the extra lift or bulk of foam tape. I usually try to keep any foam tape very minimal. I'll be using the thin, the close to my heart, thin foam tape and foam dots on here for anything that I do pop up. But I tend to keep things fairly flat because I like to pack my album with a ton of pages. Usually I have a page for each day, like one side of a page for each day. And I like to go right to the end of the month. I have done it before where I only go to the 25th or 26th and that's totally fine too. Find whatever is manageable for you, right? And depending on how much stuff you have going on, if you feel like, hey, we hit the 26th and there's nothing else to talk about, feel free to stop there, right? Now, because we are working ahead, right? I'm making my pages ahead. I always keep in mind anything that is overlapping my photo mats cannot have adhesive, whether it's foam adhesive or glue or anything like that, tape runner. I always make sure that anything going over the photo mat doesn't have any adhesive on it. The flower has the thin foam dots on it and I just left the covering on the foam dots that will be over top of where the photo is. I can always remove the covering on them, the little papers and stick it down later, but uh, it can also just live that way. It will stick perfectly fine with some of them being covered. That little sprig of greenery, you saw I ripped it in half when I stuck it down. I did the same thing down here. I took one, ripped it apart, cut it down so that it would fit in that little corner because I felt like it just needed to be in a certain spot and it wasn't working for me all connected. So there you can see the gorgeous glitter from the glitter paper, my interactive tag. I love how this page turned out. There I go, two base pages already done and ready to go. If you're looking for a way to make this project doable for you, make sure you check out the CDT Days of December sketchbook. I'll have it linked down below for you. And also watch this playlist. All this week, the creative design team will be posting videos about their December albums using these sketches. So you can get even more of an idea of what's included. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.